Is DNA really the blueprint of life as we know it? That's the question we're exploring today. For years we've been taught that DNA, the double helix of life, is the master plan from which all organisms are built. It's been considered the ultimate source code, an intricate map dictating every detail of an organism's form and function. However, this long-held belief is being challenged. In 2013, Sarah Walker and Paul Davies presented a compelling argument in their article, The Algorithmic Origins of Life. They boldly stated, DNA is not a blueprint for an organism, no information is actively processed by DNA alone. This statement directly challenges the Darwinian belief that random mutations to DNA are the driving force for all the diversity of life on Earth. So, if DNA isn't the blueprint of life, then what is it? Stay tuned, as we delve into this intriguing controversy and explore the mysteries of the code of life. What if I told you that the Darwinian claim of undirected mutations to DNA being the primary source for the creation of all the species of life on Earth might be questionable? In 2013, an intriguing article titled Criticality in Morphogenesis suggested that a repeatable form reliably emerges despite notable variations in both genes and environment. This poses a challenge to the traditional Darwinian view. Moreover, in 2014, biologist Jonathan Wells made a compelling argument. In his article, Far From Being All-Powerful, DNA Does Not Wholly Determine Biological Form, he discussed how mutation studies in embryos provide evidence against the idea that DNA alone determines the basic form of an organism. He pointed out that biologists can mutate a fruit fly embryo in every conceivable way, but the outcomes are limited, a normal fruit fly, a defective fruit fly, or a dead fruit fly. So the question arises, are we more than the sum of our genes? Let's think of DNA not as a blueprint, but as a potentially scrambled list of ingredients used differently by different cells at different times. This idea is echoed in a 2019 article titled, It's the End of the Gene as We Know It. The article asserts, there is no prior plan or blueprint for development. Instructions are created on the hoof, far more intelligently than is possible from dumb DNA. In the subsequent year, Anthony Jose, an associate professor of cell biology and molecular genetics at the University of Maryland, further supported this notion. In his article DNA May Not Be Life's Instruction Book, just a jumbled list of ingredients, he stated, DNA cannot be seen as the blueprint for life. It is at best an overlapping and potentially scrambled list of ingredients that is used differently by different cells at different times. So, if DNA isn't a blueprint, then how does biological form develop? Science is still grappling with the unsolved problem of biological form. A recent article from 2023 titled, Why We Were Told So Often the Huge Lie That DNA Is a Specification for Building Humans echoes this sentiment, quoting many experts stating that DNA is not a blueprint. This challenges the long-standing beliefs held in the scientific community about the role of DNA. Let's take a step back to 2011, when Stephen Talbot penned an enlightening article, What Do Organisms Mean? He shared an experiment by Harvard biologist Richard Lewontin. Lewontin demonstrated that if you take the developing limb bud from an amphibian embryo, disassemble the cells, let them reassemble randomly, and then replace the lump in the embryo, a normal leg still develops. This experiment suggests that the form of the limb is not solely dictated by DNA. Could there be a ruling factor beyond DNA that redefines the parts according to the larger pattern? Research is now strongly suggesting that there must be a ruling factor beyond DNA. In 2010, David Klinghoffer used a piano metaphor. To more accurately describe what is actually happening in the cell, he stated, there is a very minimal musical score in the form of DNA, inadequate to describe the music being performed, and then there is the pianist himself engaged in an improvisation on a swiftly shifting suite of themes, and this is only the construction of proteins we're talking about. It leaves out of the picture entirely the higher level components, tissues, organs, the whole body plan that draws all the lower level stuff together into a coherent, functioning form. What we should really be talking about is not a lone piano, but a vast orchestra under the directing guidance of an unknown conductor fulfilling an artistic vision, organizing and transcending the music of the assembly of individual players. As we delve deeper into the mysteries of life, we are forced to reconsider our understanding of DNA. In 2015, researchers began to apply the incompleteness theorems of Godel and Turing to the world of quantum physics. They found, even a perfect and complete description of the microscopic properties of a material 
is not enough to predict its macroscopic behavior. Our results challenge the reductionist's point of view, as the insurmountable difficulty lies precisely in the derivation of macroscopic properties from a microscopic description. Their work suggests that even a complete and perfect description of an organism's microscopic properties, such as those found in DNA, is insufficient to predict its macroscopic behavior. This challenges our previous perceptions of DNA as the end-all and be-all of life's blueprint. It's akin to having a detailed recipe for a cake, yet not knowing what the cake will taste like or even look like until it's baked. This paradigm shift in our understanding of DNA and its role in the formation of life is a stepping stone towards the future. So it seems we've been told a huge lie that DNA is a blueprint for building humans. As we continue to unravel the mysteries of life, who knows what exciting discoveries await us?